fun facts, it's Shakespeare's first play, first play he ever wrote, um, according to the, you know, to, to the smart guys who write books about this stuff. Um, it's also his shortest play. It comes in about 2,200 lines shorter than Hamlet. And so I'm glad to be working on one of the shorter ones. And it's all about mistaken identity. Uh, you know, a set of twins in, a, in the same town that keep missing one another and everybody thinks they're seeing the one that they don't know it is. And that's where the fun starts. Um, but it's really about finding your own identity and, and about illusion because a lot of the characters think they've seen one thing and then somebody contradicts them and says, no, that didn't happen. So people are constantly having to question their, their version of reality. And I think Shakespeare really has a good time with that. My first instinct was to try to get it to America somehow, get it out of the Mediterranean, get it out of England, and get it into our own, onto our own home turf just as a departure, just to see what, what that might do. And I thought, well, we're in Utah. We're in the heart of what used to be the Wild West. I wonder what that might offer up. And so I pitched the idea to the designers, and David uh, Mickelson, the costume designer, said, well, if we were set it in 1849, for the women, the silhouette of the clothing is going to be really similar to the Elizabethan silhouette. So we got to talking and sharing pictures and sharing research, and it just suddenly seemed like the gold, the Western references, the seaport references, the crazy people references, the being lost in a strange and wondrous place, it all began to fit. And then I just started reading the language again with this in mind, not reading it in a Shakespearean way, but reading it like cowboys talk in the movies. And I'm convinced that it really works. <laughs> And I hope the audience will take that ride with us. What about the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, San Francisco, the Bay, the Gold Rush? So that led me to do more homework, found out that, that, that San Francisco in 1848 was just a little tent town of about a thousand people. After gold was discovered, by the end of the following year, it had a population of 25,000 people. 500 brick buildings went up. It was no longer a tent town. And every make and model of person came through that town. Like a half a million people came through San Francisco that year on their way to Sutter's Mill to try to make their fortune in gold. I said, I want the Abbas to come out with a shotgun and blow the shotgun to get everybody's attention in the middle of this big, huge fight scene. And David Googled nuns with shotguns and found a legitimate picture of this group of nuns in habits all holding shotguns. And I thought, well, if she's a nun in the Wild West, she's got to protect herself and her people. So, um, <clears throat> well, there was just tons and tons of research about the period. Vicki uh, Vicky Smith, the set designer, and David Mickelson both came to the, the original meeting with stacks and stacks of books, and we just went through and started looking and going, oh, that would be fun to have there. Because there's a certain amount of sort of stereotypical stuff that I wanted there to be present, because I think that's the stuff that makes people comfortable. Oh, they recognize that. So it, it, it's not off-putting. You know, outside of a saloon, you see a spittoon and, and those sorts of things, and the great big swinging doors on the saloon. Costumes are, are I would say, like in any Shakespeare production, it's sort of going to run the gamut, because we've got the people of wealth, and we've got what you know, in most of the, uh, the rustics, we've got miners, we've got prospectors, we've got saloon denizens who are in, in the lower class looking garments. And then basically Adriana looks like Scarlett O'Hara on a really good day. In a lot of these gold mining towns, as they cropped up, people would come from gold mining all day. They'd go to the saloon or they'd go to the brothel, but then at a certain time, they'd leave to go see a local production of Hamlet or Lear, or whatever's being put on. There was a lot of Shakespeare happening during this period in these tiny little towns that were cropping up all over Central California. You know, so it's not like we've taken it out of a time where Shakespeare was even important. Shakespeare was vital to these people, and I think that's really fun, too. It looks historic. 
And so we're honoring that time period, and I think, again, that it's, it's going to look like a lot of your favorite Western movies. Thank you.